Let's start the presentation. So, connection. You know, when everyone says about connection, we all are connected to each other by different uh, relationships, right? Uh, if I am a speaker and you are an attendee, then how we are connected? We are connected by a lesson. What is that lesson? You hear me, right? And I, I can deliver you the, my content. So that's the lesson, right? So this connection has been throughout this uh, universe in different terms. Be that in a human readable form that we understand, or be that in in the form of digital uh, technology. So my connection term here is not on the uh, other space, but rather on the digital platform. So uh, whenever we think about connection, then it gives us uh, connection between uh, the relationship between two nodes. So we can see uh, two nodes in A and B, right? So what are they doing? They are, what are they doing? They are interacting, right? So there is a bidirectional relationship between them. Now, when we think about two different nodes and their relationship, uh, so A, A interacts B in a different manner, and B interacts A in a different manner. Similarly, is father interacts to the son in a different manner, and son interacts to his father in a different manner, right? So the relationship is something like that. When you see this in a bigger domain, then the connection gets a little bit of messier. And then we need to find uh, where the connection exists between each of these terms. Right? So you can see here, A is connected to B, B is connected to C, and C is connected to A. So if I have to find the relationship between the B and the A, then I can easily find through the A to B, but if I have to find from uh, D to uh, M to A, then I have to go through the node G, right? So there are some hidden places where we need to explore to find the connection. Now, so what kind of connection are we talking about in this series? So this is what I'm trying to deliver it to, right? You have a application or a blog site or a so website, right? So you can you publish your content in the internet, and then the internet gets viral, right? You have content, video content, articles, uh, many visuals, and then many uh, how to do something like that, blah blah blah, right? Many sessions you have recorded in the online sessions you have posted it all over there, and you have made it available in the internet, and. Uh, the internet is a big mess of things already. So in that big mess, how can we categorize all the data? So my presentation is on that. And then you can see, if I have to find the meaning of symphony, then I can easily understand, right? How the different notes contribute to the meaning of symphony here. So symphony is a music. And orchestra performs symphony. So you get the message, right? Uh, when I see this graph, then I know the meaning of symphony. So, if I have to find a meaning of one word, then in a whole ecosystem, then we can search to other beings in the whole world. So, if I have to know about me, then you can know about my peers, know about my, know about, know on the students, know on my family, right? So, it can be anywhere. You don't, you don't have to approach me already to know me. So, that's the major principle. So the web of information. Information is itself a web, and I'm talking here the web of information, right? So you, this is what? Yoda makura ko dalo ma aji dalo kumi, mani raste, right? So in this makura ko dalo, where are we? We are publishing content, then we are creating a web, right? And then we are connect, putting that content in the Internet. So that is itself a web. So in this web of information, how do I recognize my content? Right. That is the biggest channel, uh, challenge in today's world. It is related uh, by uh, 
when you are talking about the web of information, then you are trying to find information uh, through you know, Google search, through TikToks, through many social media sites, and all of these things are getting uh, accumulated in the internet. So, in this uh, context, right? Well, this is the diagram that I took from Cambridge Intelligence. So that shows how the different uh, genres of the music are connected to each other across different nodes. And you can see it, it is very large. And there are many nodes, there are many relationships, even though all of them are related to knowledges. So all the internet content that we are making available should fit, would be recognize each one of those nodes in this world. If I'm writing something about music, then the music terminology goes in this way. Then you have introduced many concepts, so how do you link each other? Well, one way is let Google do the task for you. You will connect all the terms for you. And another way is you can manually provide the information so that anyone that is working in data intensive applications can actually get benefits from your website and the web content that you publish in the internet. Okay, so knowledge represents. I've, I've talked a lot about information and web and stuff. And then this is a new term, knowledge represents. So what is knowledge? It's a very important term, I think, I, think I should say. So whenever I start to describe a car, then I can say that car has some, you know, some this much wheels and car can drive by certain wheels. Alright? So, but I can make inferences also. So if I say car is a vehicle, then I, I don't need to say that car will move on the road, right? So knowledge represents is something like that. You just give a very little information and then you get the most benefit out of the uh, uh, the hint that you provide. That is the um, knowledge over the knowledge. So how do we do this in the internet actually? I have talked the Tom. So how do you do this in the internet? So we have we develop, we understand three concepts here already. Nodes, relationships, right? So when you are talking about nodes, then that will be two different dots that are represented in a graph. And then the relationship will be in our representatives as arrows. And you can see here easily, Ram is a person, Ram works in IT company, Ram has a job. Those form three parts, they are not known as triplets. Right? So Ram is a person, is one triplet, Ram works in IT company is another triplet. And the triplets make a sense. Right? Without them, they only exist, but they are not connected. Right? So when I am uh, thinking about IT company and person, then I can work out throughout through the Ram. So this is the concept actually. Okay, so let's uh, go how we can develop this one. Uh, so uh, we'll know more about the knowledge representation rules and uh, work out through some of the examples. And actually, this document looks boring, right? And we are going to develop this document. And it looks wonderful for the developers though, because even though it is difficult at first sight, he can extract information from this document very easily. So this is, you know, uh, this is something that we are trying to achieve. This content will be available in the internet through uh, through the RDF, right? And this is the how we devise our RDF document. So it is. You can see it is an external document itself, and then we describe where the terms are uh, collected. We collect it from the RDFS uh, URL, RDF, RDF URI, FOF URI, SI URI, and OWL URI. So all the content that I am publishing in the internet are borrowed, actually borrowed from this website. So what I am trying to do is I am trying to introduce my concept, but with the help of the established concepts, you know, those which are popular in the internet. With the help of those, I'm trying to publish my content away. And uh, here, I, here we are trying to uh, define new object property, right? So this is a new object property. Object property is the relationship that we are trying to define. 
and then it talks about our home page and it has a title, it has a website and the object property ends here. So it looks something similar to schema.org, uh, right? If I do involved in SEO, then it looks something like that. So we are trying to do something like that, but what we are doing, we are not using the, the concepts introduced in the Google through schema.org, but instead we are developing our own concepts, own rights, right? We are the developers, we are making our own content, and then we think that this community needs these terms, then why is we should always borrow from the Google? Everything should not be Google, right? Something should come from us. So this is an approach that uh, we need to think whenever, we, if we are thinking to uh, contribute to the internet community by developing your own terms. So you can see here, there are links. Actually, these links are not any links, but these links define a specific path to the uh, certain term that you have introduced, and we name it as URI. Right? So anything that is available through your RDF document can be accessible through the URI. Right? Not only the website is available in the internet through the links, but also every part that you introduce are available through links. So what does it create? We can now use the links again and again so that we can make more and more relationships. So I want to now revise this, you know. So if you have understood knowledge-based documents, then I think you get a little bit of idea. So let's ask ourselves, are we using knowledge-based documents, right? So you have to answer it in yes or no, okay? So my first thing to you, are you using WordPress? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you are using WordPress, then you definitely know about SEO. Yeah. Are you using SEO? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you know SEO, then you think you know schema.org? Yes. So schema.org publishes the, all the concepts that you use for search engine optimization, right? And then when you use the concepts, class concepts from schema.org into your website, then they are available in the Google search. And how they appear is SEO meta tags. Now, if everything I said are very clear to you as your daily lifestyle, as a developer or as a content writer, then I think, you know, you are using knowledge representation already. Right? So, it is not a new term, but rather a term that you should be familiar with. I'm only trying to focus on that. So let's look at the steps to build a knowledge-based document. And uh, here, uh, I have uh, listed out some of the uh, some of these points that we will be going through the demonstration. So this is a Protease is an open source software. Uh, we will learn to use uh, Protease because. Uh, Looking at the RDF documents, our documents in itself is like working in the black and white screen, and it gives more UI experience to the developer or non developer who want to use their own our based documents, RDF documents. And then we will use existing our documents that are available in the internet, uh, and then we we'll add own relationships, create instances, and build our own, build our, own uh, our documents and publish using URI. So next we go for the demonstration and in this demonstration you will be uh, looking at the uh, simple example of how you use our document in the internet and then whenever you are publishing your content using that rules that you have just developed then uh, uh, so, so this is the video so first thing you will do obviously install Protease. This is open source software. You can find it in this site. And why I'm using Protease? Because it is open source and also it is very popular and using academic resource. And here you define your own URL where you will publish your all document or RDF document. Right? And then using this uh, URL, you are going to publish your content. And uh, in your document, you start everything with thing. There is thing in everything, in classes, in objects, in object relations, 
and in individuals, everything has a as a thing, right? So you can see here, I have a uh, listed class. I have a thing. Object property has a thing. Individuals now individuals don't have thing because they are inherited from the class, right? So let's connect the dots. So we have two nodes here, and we are trying to connect it uh, through the our all document using object property. Okay. So first, let's populate the individuals. So this goes. Uh, some of your drills that you can do uh, later in the evening, right? So you just add on. Where the nodes can, you can, with your dictionary, you can just load on here. This is startup, right? And then after that, let's understand how the nodes will be connected to each other. Because it gets easier, right? So uh, here you define everything. He has a sibling, he has a parent, he lives in this city, kind of like that relationship. Right. So, with the help of those object relationship, we are making RDF uh, uh, RDF documents, and then after that, we go through the class declarations. So, class is declared, and then okay. So, this goes on, uh, uh, and then uh, after you introduce all the class concepts uh, in the uh, R document or the RDF document that you have just introduced. You see if that is a all file, and then you can publish that content using a load. So load what it creates is it creates a human readable site from that XML document you just created, and then to implement logic, you just you borrow those concepts from the you are you you are a document you just publish, right? So it's very easy. You just introduce the concept, and then you use that concept in your document. 